And let me read this to you. Romans chapter 8, 26 to 28 says, Now in the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. For we don't know how we're to pray, what to pray as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that in all things God causes all things to work together for good. To those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. See, but I want to point something out to you really important for you to take away that last verse 28 begins with and and God causes all things to work together that word and lets us know that's a conjunction meaning that that verse 28 is fully dependent on verses 26 and 27 that we allow ourselves to be led by the spirit as in life we're led by the spirit in our prayer we're led by the spirit in our decrees so much frustration rises up in us because we don't see answers to our prayers because we don't see the shifts because we don't see the transformation and yet we forget we don't know what to pray we don't know what to say we don't know how we're supposed to do life but holy spirit does and when we make room for him and when we yield to him oh he causes all things to work together you know it's like we're trying to bake a cake and we, we whisk the eggs, right? And we, we, we blend in the butter, we add the sugar, you pour the milk, you mix, you stir, you mix, you stir, you do all the work, right? And then you go and you pour it in the pan, right? Preheat the oven, butter the pan, you pour it in the pan, you put it to bake, you get it out, and what is it? Wait a minute. No, you didn't put the flour in, it's a quiche. <laughs> it's not gonna work if you don't put in the main ingredients, is it? It's not going to work. All things don't come together for good if you don't add the main ingredients. Come on. We can't do it without the Spirit of God. You know, and some of you say, oh, well, isn't the main ingredient, isn't the main thing the Word of God? Yes, Jesus is the Word made flesh, and it is the Spirit of God that causes the Word to come alive. He is the one that takes a Logos Word and gives life to it, so it's a rhema word, applicable and relevant in the moment. Holy Spirit is the one that reveals Jesus to us. Holy Spirit is the one who teaches us of the Father and then also reminds us the very things that the Father taught us. The Spirit of God. And in Ephesians 1, 3, it says, The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Psalm 23 begins, The Lord is my shepherd. I have, not, I have everything I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Why? Because He gives you the spirit of the living God to abide within you. He's given you your pillar of fire by day, your cloud of glory by night, or, or pillar of fire by night, cloud of glory by day, for you to be a glory cow. He says, I give you everything, everything you need for life and godliness. So this 12-year-old boy that I have, I call him my miracle son. He is my only child. And he was born with several heart defects. He almost died. He had to have emergency open heart surgery when he was only one month old. Between that and up until age nine, he had a total of 12 different surgeries. So he's an absolute miracle. But let me tell you, doctors said that he couldn't, he would need a pacemaker. He couldn't be out in the sun. He couldn't play sports and exert himself. That he was going to have weak muscles in his legs. Uh, all, all these things, uh, uh, damaged organs because of lack of oxygenated blood before they fix the problem in his heart. None of the things that the, God, the doctor spoke over him does he deal with today. He is healed. Miraculously healed. Organs preserved. No pacemaker. Plays the sports. You can't keep him still, okay? All right. But this, this 12 year old boy, when he was one month old, and the doctor said, We don't know how he has survived outside of the womb in this condition. And if you hadn't brought him here today, he may not have survived until tomorrow. You cannot take him home. He needs emergency open heart surgery. I'm gonna give you some time, make phone calls, figure out what you're gonna do. He's gonna be in the hospital a while. If one of you wanna stay, figure it out, whatever. Doctor left. And this mama was absolutely devastated. Our one child, our one son that we had prayed for, fasted for, waited for all of this time, and I'm thinking. And then they told us the surgery may not even be successful. It's a 50-50, right? They, they give you all the worst scenario. You got to sign off on it and all that. Leave us in the room alone. And I'm sobbing, crying. And I'm just thinking, how in the world is this happening? And I'm just overwhelmed, overcome with emotion. And you know that in that moment, I just felt the presence of the Lord come in the room. And I look up, 
And on the wall in this doctor's office, there's a massive portrait. It was like, I don't know, maybe like six feet tall, a huge portrait of a Roman soldier, <laughs> fully dressed in armor with little lines and the scripture citation for every piece of the armor that the soldier was wearing. And in that moment, I heard the voice of the Lord say, I have given you everything you need to walk through this. Now march on with strength. You have everything you need. And Ephesians chapter 6, we don't have time to go through it today. The armor of God. I'm going to read one verse later maybe, but, but I encourage you. Take that as your homework, okay? Read it in different translations. I love the Passion Translation on it. Read it in different translations. Go through it. Learn how to put it on. Clothe yourself with Christ. Wear it every single day. Because that became a key passage for helping me walk through all of what nine years of surgeries and believing for miracles and walking with the medical community through all of this was like. But Ephesians 6 was key for me. But you know that what the Lord said to me that day, he said, I give you everything you need to walk through this, march on with strength. It wasn't until years later that I was studying to speak, I was preparing to speak for a women's conference actually in New York City, and I was studying on Deborah. And I did not know until that time that those words, march on with strength, come straight out of Judges chapter 5, the song of Deborah, when in the midst of battle, she speaks to herself and says, Deborah, march on with strength. If you know the story of Deborah, you know that the people of God that they were in oppression, that the enemies were coming, had come against them. In Judges 5, 7, she says, war was at the gates. Come on, village life had ceased. It wasn't, it wasn't even safe to go outside. They had to go through the back roads. They had no weapons. They were a people that were weak. They were a people that were afraid. They were a people that felt hopeless. And Deborah, in verse 7, it says, war was at the gates, right? And she says, until I, Deborah, arose a mother in Israel. So she spoke to herself. She's like, Deborah, arise. Be a mother for your people. In verse 12 of Judges 5, awake, awake, Deborah, awake and sing a song. Come on, God is saying, speak to yourself, speak to your soul, and say, awake, awake, awake. And Judges 5, 21 is where she says, oh, my soul, march on with strength. Awaken, arise, march on. You see, in Ephesians chapter 6, we're commissioned by God as warriors, right? Engage in a real battle. You know that it lays out spiritual warfare there and all the different parts of the armor of God. Because the scripture tells us the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And some might say, oh, I'm all about intimacy and loving my king. And I'm about pursuing peace. And I'm a lover and not a fighter. I'm a virtuous woman, right? I'm not a warring woman. But you know that Ephesians 6 is the armor for the Ephesians bride of Christ. Ephesians 5, bride of Christ, where in chapter 5, he's speaking to husbands and he says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church, his bride. So right there, we get the bride and the warrior chapter by chapter, the warrior bride that is causing to arise in this season. Do so you know that Proverbs chapter 31, virtuous woman, it's not all about cooking omelets, okay, and cleaning toilets and folding laundry. Do you know that Proverbs chapter 31, the virtuous woman, the translation for the word virtuous, I think, I think uh, one of the ladies mentioned this before, but it's actually a warring word. Virtuous is a warring word. She is a warrior wife, a warrior bride, strong, able, forceful, powerful, willing to go to battle. She fortifies her arms, girds herself with strength. Come on, that Hebrew word actually translates into one who comes with the strength of an army. One who comes with the strength of an army. It comes from that root word, chayil, chayil. It means to labor and travail in order to bring forth life. Deborah was both a destroyer of problems, a destroyer of the enemy, a warrior against the things that warred against her children, and also a birther of solutions, a giver of life, a mother. And like Deborah, the Lord of hosts, mighty in strength, is calling out to the places of your weakness, saying, 
Receive the empowerment of my Holy Spirit that you might awaken, that you might arise, that you might march on with strength. There are solutions that I want to bring through you into the earth, birth through you into the worst situations in society.